Hey YouTube, it is Trinity Productions, trinityprosound.com, coming at you again with another speaker video. This time RCF has sent us a ST12 SMA. It is um, in their ST line, a new floor monitor that they have come out with. And so today we're going to be doing a take it apart and also doing a little bit of um, smart on it just to kind of see what the specs are and uh, how they line up with uh, what the actual uh, readings that we get out of the, the laptop on smart are for the frequency response of this. So um, anyway, what we're going to do is get this unboxed and go through the specs real quick and, um, and then get into the take it apart and show you what this new um, ST12 uh, SMA monitor is from RCF. So right out of the chute, got the manual and the, uh, the warranty certificate here. Um, let's go ahead and get into the manual and into the specs um, of this box. So this is the uh, wrong spec sheet. This has got a spec sheet for a NX monitor in it and not the ST. Hmm. So, going to have to go online and pull down the specs. Just something that is noteworthy, this is a area demo. Um, so, the likelihood of you getting a NX spec sheet into your box is highly unlikely. So, it looks like somebody just um, kind of got things kind of screwed up and repacking. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into the specs on this thing. Um, stage monitor, um, two-way, um, 800 watts peak, 400 watts RMS, max SPL is 129 um, dB. Uh, frequency response states that it goes 45 to 20. It has a 12-inch woofer with a 2.5-inch voice coil, a 1-inch driver with a 1.4-inch um, voice coil on it. Um, specs, horizontal coverage, 90 degrees, 60 degrees this way. Um, input section on the thing. Where is it at? Probably back here with me um, on the amplifier. Let's go ahead and turn this around. So input section, balanced, unbalanced, um, XLR, um, input sensitivity minus 2 dBU to plus 4 dBU. Crossover frequency is at 1400 cycles. Uh, it does have a RMS limiter and also a high frequency protection and then there is a soft limiter built into it um, as well. Total power, like we said, 400 watts RMS has 100 watts going to the high frequency driver and 300 watts RMS going to the low frequency driver. Um, cooling is convection, no fans. So um, does have a handle on it. Um, somewhere here, right here. And the weight of this box is um, 39.68 pounds unboxed. Um, made of Baltic birch plywood, so we'll get into that and take a look at it. And, um, and then we'll see how the specs on this frequency response wise um, come out um, with the smart versus what they actually are. Um, just noticing out of the chute, it's got a really um, great grill on the thing, as you can see here, um, pretty much standard with the, uh, the RCF. Um, construction looks good. It does have a pole socket, so it can kind of do dual use um, as a wedge monitor or it can be up on a pole um, to use as a main, so you're not always stuck with having to use this thing um, as a wedge. Um, as far as construction-wise, done a nice job with detailing it. Um, amplifier in the back of the unit there um, so that unfortunately if this is up on stage you're going to see your cables and everything coming out of the back of um, the speaker but um, that's typically how they're done. Um, sometimes we go into the ends and the sides with them but this particular one because they are using this um, standard amp that they use in a lot of their speakers um, it comes out of the back. So um, as far as power on it, it does have um, an IEC connector, um, fuse switch, balanced um, input and output, quarter inch input, and then it does have a sensitivity control, um, does have a flat and boost on it, mic line sensitivity switch, 
and then it has um, power indicator, signal indicator, and limiter indicator um, on the, uh, the amplifier itself. So um, as far as the weight, I don't know. It probably is 39 pounds. It doesn't feel like it. Um, it's fairly light. You know, for a wedge this size, probably weighs as much um, as our NX 12 series monitor do, somewhere in that range. Um, and about the same size. Has a little bit more of a up angle on it than the, uh, the NX-12s do, but um, overall um, looks like a nice design. So what we're going to do now is get into it, take a look at what the drivers are inside this, and then the construction of the cabinet on the RCF ST-12 SMA. So we've got the, um, the grill off, and um, somebody apparently has been into this thing before we have um, because uh, some of the little um, bushings on the grill um, to mount it um, were kind of stripped out. So, um, but they do use um, Allen head um, screws on everything, and um, the grill does have these little feet on it that, uh, that will isolate it somewhat from the cabinet and uh, provide some little some buffering, um, kind of rubbery um, with the, uh, the insert feet. Um, grill construction again is probably 18 gauge, um, foam lined as you can see so that as with all the RCF products um, you don't get to see inside the speaker and it gives it that really nice um, pro look um, up on your stage. So anyway, with it opened up, um, got the horn assembly. It is a um, injection molded assembly. Um, and then we've got the 12 inch um, woofer over on this side. Uh, we've got 60 degrees of dispersion this way, top to bottom, 90 degrees this way up on the stage. Um, typical horn and low frequency driver um, construction um, on this box. And so um, what they've done uh, also on the inside, you can see is they've got stops here that help um, hold that grill in so that it doesn't compress um, into the uh, into the speaker. So done a nice job. Um, what we're going to do now is go ahead and get both of these drivers pulled out, take a look at what the drivers are, um, take a look at the high frequency driver, we'll get the amp pulled, then we'll take a look at the construction of the, um, the cabinet um, on the RCF uh, ST12 SMA. So we have got all the screws out. Um, all of the um, the machine screws on this are all Allen head. They are the same size as the ones that hold on the grill assembly. Um, all fine thread into thread certs um, on the face of this. So got both drivers loose. We're going to go ahead and pull the um, high frequency driver first. And note that the plus side is orange. And pull that off with a uh, little push on connectors. Um, this is a PDX S05284 um, I think that's the driver possibly the serial number um, but it's a nice um, nice high frequency driver good size on it um, not sure we're gonna be able to pull it um, because the Allen wrenches I have are all too long um, to go on to those um, Allen nuts that they have got this held on to this um, driver housing with. It is ceramic magnet on this. It's not a Neo, um, but it looks like one of their standard drivers that we have seen on other um, speaker cabinets and boxes um, from RCF. So again, um, they do use a, a fairly dense um, plastic in their uh, in their horns um, on the injection molding, and so um, very um, rugged braced. And then the whole driver assembly bolts onto this um, steel plate um, in the back of the unit here that you can kind of see um, from the overhead camera. So um, good job. Nice. Um, we'll see how it sounds when we get everything together. One of the things I noticed as we pulled this out, they've done a really nice job with getting some dampening material inside the box to help um, just keep the thing from radiating. And um, again, the woofer on this is a um, uh, ceramic as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So get that pulled out. It is a stamped basket um, on this particular speaker, ceramic magnet. And um, we're going to go ahead and pull the leads off this guy as well. 
kind of show you the driver here. Um, just standard 12 inch driver. Um, I don't see a part number that I recognize on this particular driver um, out of this box. They do have a um, little bit of gasket material around the back of it to help seal it up as it goes inside the, um, the speaker box. So we'll set that aside. One of these days we're going to take one of these guys apart and show you what the construction is on it and cannibalize the, um, the woofer driver itself. So now you can see exposed to the back, the amplifier inside there, and um, no fans. Um, they've got the power input section going into the amplifier, uh, switch mode power supply on these guys. That's what makes them so small and so light. You can see a little pole socket sitting out there. Um, they do have ports um, on it uh, to help with uh, low frequency. And um, those are up at the top of the box here. And uh, with the construction, you can see the laminated plywood um, on the inside and um, in some of the, the bracing that they've done on the ports themselves. Um, all of the thread certs are in all the way around for the low frequency driver as well as the high frequency driver so that should you ever need to have the thing serviced or pull a driver out because something has happened to it, um, they're not wood screws that are going to get stripped out, that they are the thread certs and they've done a really nice job um, with that. Um, one of the things that I didn't mention, which it has, is the feet. Um, on the bottom of the unit, little rubbery feet, so that you can put it down on stage. It is not going to scoot around um, with stage vibration. So um, with the speakers out, cabinet is very light. So what we're going to do is flip this thing over and pull the amp out. It is just one of their standard um, digital DigiPro type amplifiers that they use in a lot of their uh, the NX boxes, the HD boxes, the Art Series boxes. This one is just configured for a different power rating because it's less power than some of their more powerful amplifiers that are found like in the, the NX uh, Series boxes, which are 700 watts. Um, this is just a, a reduction um, for this particular speaker and monitor. So we'll go ahead and get the amplifier pulled on this thing and then um, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and get it back together and then run um, some of the smart software on it, uh, analyze and look at the, uh, the response curve that we're getting out of this speaker and um, see how that lines up with what the paperwork says. As with all of the RCF boxes, the wood boxes, um, these guys are, again, um, sorry for all the noise, but again, these are machine screws on... Um, on thread certs going into the uh, into the back of the box itself to hold the amplifier in. Um, as you can kind of see on the amp, um, it is just, you know, kind of just a big massive heat sink on this thing. So um, IEC input on it. Um, I wish that it was a um, power con, um, but it is an IEC. They give you a pretty decent cord in the box that is 14 gauge, um, probably eight feet long, so it is fairly beefy. Um, it is a, um, an SJT, so it's uh, SJ um, with a T rating on it, which is the jacket material that it's like, it's decent. Um, they can't put SJO or SJOOW um, cord in these things because it just the price point would have to go up considerably um, just because of the type of the cordage on it and the plugs and things that they would have to use on um, that type of cord. So enough said with that we're going to go ahead and get this amplifier pulled out and um, take a peek at it. And here be the amplifier. So again um, standard RCF amp in this thing. Um, like we said, power input section here on the bottom. There is a on and off switch here with a fuse inside on the IEC connector. And then up on the top up here, we've got the uh, XLR in and out quarter inch um, as well. And then we've got the indicator lights here and then also the switches for boost and for mic line input um, on this. So you can hook uh, directly to it. Um, with a microphone if you need to, um, to use as a small um, PA. So um, 
this particular amplifier weight wise is um, under five pounds. So um, all aluminum heat sink on this. Um, one of the things, as we said in a lot of our videos with the RCF amplifiers like this, um, with no fans, it's fantastic that you don't ever have to worry about a fan not spinning up to be able to cool the speaker. So they've done a really good job. We have had zero problems um, with uh, overheat um, or thermal failures with any of the RCF amplifiers um, over the years as long as we have been using and selling RCF equipment. So um, yay team. Um, really nice that uh, you know, they've done such an excellent job um, with, uh, with their amplifiers and, and the speakers. Um, as far as the construction, again, uh, with the back open on this thing, there is a gasket around the edge here that seals up the amplifier so that um, the speaker stays um, acoustically and sonically um, sealed and secure and letting all the um, air come out the front like it is supposed to um, on the suspension of the, um, of the woofer. Um, as far as construction-wise, this thing is all glued and screwed together um, so that uh, you can see evidence of some of the, uh, the gluing um, on the inside of the box here. Um, and then it is um, kind of sprayed down in a spatter coat um, for texturing and to finish it off in kind of a um, satin or a semi-gloss type uh, finish on it. You can also see around the edge here on the horn assembly that they have placed gasketing material on that as well um, to keep that sealed so that anything and everything that needs to come out of this box is coming out of the ports on it um, and not from around the edges of the speakers to be able to keep the suspension um, on it doing what it needs to do. So um, with that said, we're going to go ahead and get this thing back together and um, run some noise through it and probably a little bit of music and um, show you what this speaker, this ST12 SMA from RCF is all about. So as we are getting this back together, um, just a thought here that um, with the power cord that they give you on this, the 14 gauge power cord, uh, there is a reason that RCF and a lot of the other speaker manufacturers um, do include such a heavy cord in the um, in with their speakers and uh, you want to always ensure that you've got enough power um, for your event and gig um, I cannot tell you how many times we get calls from um, customers that we have sold speakers to that they are having issues with the speakers prematurely um, limiting. Um, I've had some where they have um, unfortunately um, driven them too hard with low power and have burned out channels um, on them. And it's just an unfortunate event. It's not any cause of the speaker design um, or anything like that. We start quizzing them about the power that they're using and unfortunately some of these guys are feeding stuff with Home Depot orange cords in 16 gauge um, and running these things out for 100 feet. Um, I can't emphasize enough that you need ample power um, for your event and your gig, especially subwoofers when you really start driving them hard. Um, you need to have that ability to have that inrush of um, power and current. Um, we run everything in a minimum of 12 gauge to all of our feeders. Some of it's 10 gauge um, to some of our bigger systems. And then everything that goes out on stage, depending on how it's fed, gets fed from a 12 gauge cord and then will break out into 14. Um, rarely do we go down to 16 unless it's just one single speaker on a run and it's not very far. Um, where we have built some spider cables um, to be able to distribute that and handle that out um, on a single run. But um, power for these guys, um, especially as you start getting into uh, larger amplifiers, 700 watts, 1,000 watts, 1,200 watts, 1,500 watts, three and 4,000 watts on subwoofers, 
um, it is so important to have the, um, the correct power um, and cords and everything running to these speakers so that you do not damage them um, in trying to get s enough sound out of them with low voltage, low amperage um, on the end of the plug. So, soapbox point for today. So we've got the amp back in. We're going to flip this back over and get the drivers in and then get some noise running through it. One of the other things as we are putting this back together that I failed to mention is that the horn in this is rotatable. So um, if in fact you want to use this thing for a speaker on a stick um, and get the 90 degree coverage if it's up on a stick this way and the 60 degrees in the horizontal or the vertical, um, you can rotate the horn and um, be able to do that and uh, open up the dispersion pattern pattern a little bit more um, if you want to use this for a speaker on a stick. So there we have it back together. Nice neat little package. The RCF ST12 SMA. We're going to go ahead now and uh, hook it up, run a little bit of music through it, make sure we got it back together right, and, um, and then take a look at some traces on it with the, um, the software. So we are set up on the iPad here and um, have got our test equipment and everything plugged into the iPad and are using um, the smart analysis tools. And what we're going to do is go ahead and start it um, and it's going to have some noise coming through it. We'll silence that for right now. But you can see we've got spectrograph going here and then we're going to have a reference of what the generator is doing versus what the speaker is doing and um, kind of show you what, um, what that's looking like. So we're going to go ahead and fire up the generator, um, generating from 19 up to 20,000 cycles. And as you can see, we've got a little bit of boost um, up in the 12K area that's running a little bit hotter compared to the, the rest of it. But as far as the trace is concerned, if we take this out and maybe go into third octave, you can kind of see how flat that is across the, um, the band. It does go down if we hit um, some sine, sine wave here. We'll drop this down, and we're down reproducing, you know, 70, 66. This thing does go down, and I can, it drops off at about 48. Um, as far as frequency response, I don't think you'd ever want to drive it that hard. Um, and then going all the way up. To higher than what I can currently hear. But as you can see with the response of it, um, set on third octave, we're, we're pretty smooth all the way across the band. And it is doing kind of what the, um, the spec sheet says it would do. Um, as far as, um, as frequency response is concerned. So we're going to go ahead and put that back into 48 octave and turn the noise back on again. But you can kind of see what the speaker's doing here versus what our trace is doing. And it tracks pretty close. There is um, a little bit of high frequency boost up in this area above and beyond what our noise generator is doing. And that's why you're seeing this area of green light up a little bit more. Um, as far as the, um, the signal is concerned. I'm going to go ahead and put it into um, Now we're in flat it was in boost So but it's still tracking a little bit less um, as, as far as the high frequency is concerned We'll go ahead and put it back into So the low frequency out of the boost mode drops off a little bit sooner, about 10 cycles um, quicker than it was when it was in boost mode. But overall, as far as the response is concerned, um, looks pretty flat all the way across the band. We'll get this into, um, again, third octave and take a look at it um, of what it's doing versus what the noise generator is doing um, on this. So all in all, um, for a monitor in that price point and what we're seeing here as far as the graph is concerned um, and also what the, um, the specs are, um, 
runs pretty close to what they say it will. So um, good job, RCF. What we haven't done yet is um, run a little bit of music through it. And so what we're going to do is break out the iPod. Sorry for the mic stand in front of the thing, but um, that's what we are referencing um, everything to with the, the input. Um, so we're going to run a little bit of music through it, see what it sounds like, and um, give you our opinion of what the uh, music reproduction is as far as um, vocal clarity, low frequency, and just overall tonality um, of the RCF ST12MA monitor. Okay, so we got her all hooked up, got, uh, going to play some music through it. Um, sounds pretty good. Have you ever I know Are you it's, listening? it's really tough to hear through Damn. this, but I mean, it's got some good, good low frequency energy to it. Good yeah. vocal clarity. So there you have it, RCF ST12 SMA two-way monitor or speaker on a stick. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment um, below. We will um, work on answering um, every comment we receive. Uh, any questions, um, you can give us a buzz or email us um, with the links and uh, you can reach out to us. Uh, we are in Northern California, Pacific time. It is Trinity Productions, trinityprosound.com, and we are at area code 209-832-8023. If we're not in the office, leave us a message or drop us an uh, email. We're on Facebook, and as you found us already here, we are on YouTube. So um, if you like what you see, um, we've got more videos planned and coming. Sorry we haven't posted in a while, um, but uh, please subscribe to us. And um, we will try to keep it up with uh, RCF, um, also DB Technologies, and also FBT um, for our speaker reviews. So, like I said, any questions or anything, um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we will answer as best we can. Um, we are not just dealers for this. We use it as well. We've got a uh, extensive inventory of um, RCF. DB Technologies and FBT speakers that we use and also um, we rent out as well. So um, we've got, you know, for wedding events and, and small little PAs and things like that that people need, um, we do rental of um, all that as well. So we know what the stuff can do. Um, and when we do make the recommendations, it is all based on um, what we feel the um, product is uh, and the speaker system is capable of doing and doing very well. So anyway, it is Trinity Productions, trinityprosound.com, area code 209-832-8023. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you soon.